Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody today? It's a lovely day here. It's about to snow some more or might be snowing. It was 28 earlier, 28 degrees, freezing rain later today and overnight. But right now the roads are, I think are dry. I haven't even been out there. I had trouble getting my dogs uh, in still though. Hey, Mary Thomas, Amber, Mike, Angie Ray, WV Holler Girl, what's up? How are y'all doing? I mean, seriously, um, what's weather like where you are and all that stuff? Yep. We're hanging in here. Hey, Jules. Snow Ice Day. Yeah, they canceled a lot of classes like yesterday in anticipation. And I think I'm on, like, I haven't really checked the weather this morning closely. I just was looking at some stuff, but I think we were on the edge of it. Hey, sweet Lulu. Uh, believe I'm right on the edge of it, but I don't know what's coming later. Oh yeah. No, we're getting snow right now. We got sleet or we got a mixture yesterday, um, but it's not really that wet out. So I don't think it did it overnight. Hey, Ninja Mama, but cold below, right? Mine is five. Where Ninja Mama? Well, I don't, you don't have to tell your like exact location or anything, but minus five. I mean, like it was 28 here. It was in the twenties. Uh, it's supposed to be hovering right around like 30 to 32 ish. I think Colorado. Okay. Yeah. Oh, raining in 32. Yeah. We're going to have that kind of temperature now up until tomorrow. So I know yesterday I said, I wanted to cover a couple of different true crime cases and I didn't know which one I was going to cover. And then last night I discovered, well, I looked for it and I found an old, um, a video from a year before Ann Hayes ran into the home driving 80 miles per hour. I'm just floored by this y'all. It's, it might just be me. I hope anybody else here because it gets talked about for a while and then it kind of gets shoved back. But I've been following this since it happened. I think the, the whole wreck thing seemed, I know you and convince me otherwise, like y'all don't have to, I'm not trying to convince anybody. I just, I'm, I, I'm typically like a conspiracy theorist type person. And I just, you know, there are conspiracies going on about Anne and Ellen and um, Twitch boss and, like something is just weird really amber i mean there's just something about that wreck to me um she wasn't on drugs you know she wasn't using drugs or alcohol that day she was basically sober because yeah you know, if you go do a background check on somebody who's done drugs yeah they're gonna have it in their system and they said cocaine and fentanyl before the wreck 
I mean, you know, right after the wreck. But then they said, well, maybe the fentanyl was because, I mean, the woman was uh, needing pain meds. So, of course, they're going to give her fentanyl. You think she was silenced in your mama? See, I do, too. I want y'all to convince me otherwise. <laughs> yes, I'm glad y'all are uh, interested in this because I just, me, too. Me, too, Amber. I didn't want to believe it. Now they're saying that Twitch that uh, Twitch took his life because uh, he said something they alluded to past, in, pa you know, past struggles. And the only past struggle that we know about that the media knows about, I'm not saying I'm the media, but, you know, the, the general public knows about was a very big strain between him, you know, while he was while they were finishing up their shows been canceled. People are accusing Ellen of just being a horrible person on her show to people. And I mean, I've seen some videos where she did push people like who was it? She was getting her to drink to prove that she was trying to get her to drink to prove that she wasn't pregnant. I mean, and she just kept on and on and she, well, you know, I don't know about all that, but we knew that we heard there's, it's been said, okay, we heard, it's been said, whatever, that Twitch was feeling in the middle, that people were giving him a hard time because he was stuck. I mean, you, you ever get in the middle of two people, like you can do it right here on YouTube. You got two like creator friends and they start fighting and things are being said and you are stuck in the middle. Well, that's the way I see Twitch. He was the general population, the people who were saying Ellen was mean, and here he is on her show, and she supposedly didn't treat him bad, and so he was stuck in the middle, and then this career that he was in the middle of got taken from him because of that. So, I, you know, there's just weirdness to me, and maybe it's just Hollywood, but WB Holler Girl and Epstein <laughs> didn't either. I mean, you know, but I, I, I'm just, I, I just can't stop looking at it. So it's the same way I am with um, a couple of true crime cases right now. But today I just wanted to go here because it was just really, it was just really uh, getting to me. So I'm not sure what I want to play first. I guess so if anybody's in here and doesn't, didn't um uh, doesn't really know about everything um yeah, that's not the one i wanted to show y'all all right not that one i've got them all here um i think maybe it's this one and then we're going to watch a video of ann talking to I appreciate y'all being here. And if you are here watching on the replay, um, please put that in comments so I'll know that you are here. And I'm happy that you are catching me on the replay. I'm happy if you're catching me live. I'm pulling this up right now. Hey, Burnt Popcorn. Yeah, they've been broken up a long time. But um, evidently, um, according to Ann, Ellen put a quite a damper on her um, her life there for a while, and because of Ellen's got more power. That's I'm just telling you what Ann says. I don't know, but she put a pretty big uh, stomperoo on Ann's movie career. Now, you know, I don't think any of us think Ann was the best actress in the world, um, but she was in some major Hollywood films and lifetime movies in and stuff um uh so y'all a lot of y'all think the same thing yeah they've been broken up a long time that's true now we're gonna look at this wreck real quick this is only a couple of minute video i hope this is the one one of them from the helicopter we watched last year when it was right after it happened Oh, well, thanks, Mary Thomas. Thanks for being here. Hey, Angie. 
Me too, Blissful. She was. And I just caught a Lifetime movie with her just the other day. I don't know how new it was. Also, uh, I started to do this before. And then last night I saw Sherry Papini. I don't know how you say her name exactly. There's a new Lifetime movie out about her that I started watching last night, but I didn't get very far into it. I'm going to cover that. I've got some video of her. You know, she was the one that faked her kidnapping. Um, I've got some video of her in the interrogation after she came home. And so if anybody wants to uh, watch that movie on life, it's on Lifetime. Um, I don't know the name of it right off the top of my head, but um, I believe it's new. And, you know, you can find out from these movies, you're not going to find out all the facts or anything, but you can get a good idea kind of what happened. Um, so catch that because we're going to talk about that later in the hmm, maybe this week. Texas is here and blissful with Texas. They're in a romance. Oh, you did, Angie Ray. What's it called? What's that movie called? So I can tell everybody. Um, because I if I don't remember. You have to finish it too. I just want to know what it's called. Um, so we can um watch it. We're in Hollywood this morning, sitting here in the um Right in the middle of Hollywood. Now, here's the wreck scene. Let me point out that, okay, there is, there are fire trucks lined up across here. There is an ambulance. You got to go out of the house, around over here. Can y'all see the pointer moving? Can y'all see that? You got to move around here. You got to wiggle in amongst these fire trucks and then run down the street where there's an uh, where there's a an ambulance waiting and there's a stretcher sitting out there. Well, I don't think they have room in there for two stretchers. So why is there one ambulance? I never could see another ambulance. There's one ambulance. There are two stretchers. One they've got up by the house and they don't think this person in there is alive. Because they're, and really, I mean, you can't inhale toxins like that. This, but this just is weird to me. Hoax, the kidnapping of Sherry Papini. Thank you. That's the name of the movie, guys, uh, that I'm wanting y'all to watch. Or if you know more about the case, that's cool too. Um, but if you're interested in that, there is a movie out on, <clears throat> on Lifetime. And uh, we're going to look at some video. The video that I have is Sherry and her husband, and he doesn't really know the truth. And he's in there, he doesn't know the truth. So I'm interested in that, and we're gonna look at that. So let's watch this real, real quick. Bobby and Marla, it was amazing what happened out here. LA City Fire Department, I gotta give it to them right off the bat. The men and women from this fire department, some of the most amazing. Vehicle into a structure, then that car, catches fire. And when we say into a structure, I mean all the way in, almost coming out the other side. This house out here on Walgrove, right at the cross of Brookhaven, I mean at Preston, you can see that T intersection. The best we can figure, that vehicle was on this street and made its way across, not stopping ever, through those hedges, through the front door or through that front wall of this home and lodge itself almost in the back. Then it caught fire. L.A. City Fire Department arriving here very quickly. They had this home with fire and knowing there is a vehicle inside there. Firefighters making an attack on that fire. Other firefighters trying to get into that building to get that driver out of that car. While all this was going on, they couldn't get to that car. They actually had to call in heavy rescue. That's what you see right there. They hooked up cables to that car, pulled it out. It's actually in that driveway. And then... And then the driver, well, L.A. City Fire Department, their paramedics pulled that driver from that vehicle. We have tape of that. Why is the ambulance way over there? Why is the ambulance over there? I know it's not, I mean, it looks farther probably than, I mean, it's not that far, but why is it so far away? What was disturbing about it for you, Cassandra? 
her sitting up or just the whole thing. So I was watching it like after it happened. I don't know if it was live while it was happening or if I caught the replay. I think I caught it live that day. But I don't get this part. And I don't get why paramedics don't dress in fire equipment. Like these guys are dressed like they've been in the fire. I've never seen an ambulance driver, an EMS dressed like that. Oh, maybe so. Okay. They were afraid the house would blow up. So they put the ambulance way out there, but they've got all these other fire trucks. I mean, the fire trucks, some of them were fighting the fire. They got all these firefighters out there, but I don't see any ambulance drivers. Okay, you're trying to talk me out of it. <laughs> the fire trucks need to be closer to put fire out. Ambulance is considered secondary until fire out. Okay. Okay. I can see that. Why is there another stretcher over there? And why are they rushing her to an ambulance if they think she's dead? They've got her covered up. Now, my theory on that is possibly they thought they had found out who she was by the time this all happened, that she was somebody famous, and they covered her up with this sheet. And then she came to, and her adrenaline, uh, because I have a firefighter friend, and um, I asked her, well, she had posted on her Facebook that, Anne wasn't going to make it, even when they were saying Anne's going to be okay. She's going to live. And my firefighter friend posted, it, she's not, because she inhaled all those toxins from that smoke for an hour. And you've got um, all kinds of things that you can't live after breathing and then not being able to breathe. And then she gets out in the fresh air, perhaps the adrenaline kicks in. And that's what my friend said. I said, well, how, why did she sit up? And she said, it's probably adrenaline. So I don't know. My firefighter friend, she's uh, rescued a lot of people from fires. She's watched a lot of people, pulled people out of fires that have, have passed away. She's done all of that. So, okay. Disturbing the whole thing, the speed, the emergency workers are jumping out. What she was, uh, okay, Cassandra, I'm sorry you don't feel well. Um, maybe you can catch the, oh, and the human trafficking, because the movie that she was making was about human trafficking. And so they've tried to tie her in, but some people have tied this all into this big conspiracy that she and Twitch and other people, I think there's like a couple other people that they think uh, were killed as part of this big scheme, but we'll, we'll finish this and then basically had him on a gurney. We weren't sure what the situation was there on his condition, but then as he made his way over to the ambulance, you see it right there. He jumps up out of that gurney. It was horrific, scary for a moment for everybody watching. And then the fire department, well, they had to sedate, sedate him and take him to the hospital. Right now, though, the structure is still standing. No other victims inside that home. But again, this happening out here in Palms this afternoon, crazy thing to see for sure but again that uh, no other injuries and that driver now in the hospital ambulance had pulled both stretchers out while waiting in case but my concern is why she was wrapped up like dead if they thought she was they would have left in car for investigation yeah see i don't it doesn't make sense was she did they think she was dead so they just wrapped her on a sheet and rushed her to an ambulance. I just, there was just a flash of a moment when I was watching this a few days later, or even maybe, I don't remember exactly the moment, but it flashed in my mind. Something seemed Hollywoodish about it. It just, I did, I can't help my intuition. And that's what happened. And so, um, oh, really, Cassandra? Uh, it's probably very shady. Mr. Burks have. Oh, some have speculated it was a burn sheet. Possible, possible. 
I mean, that makes sense. I don't, uh, other people said it was a body bag. I don't think it was a body bag. Um, so now let's vote. Do you want me to play? Hey, Mel Mel, put water on it for burns. The Corona and, oh, I'm sorry. The C word and RSV. Yeah, I hope you feel better. It was a burn blanket. So they didn't think she had passed, but they pulled her out of the car and her sitting up to them wasn't a big deal. Okay. I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can look at all this stuff. Now, I want y'all to vote on something for me. Do you want me to play next her talking about Ellen? Do you want me to play her discussing Ellen canceling her next, her words, her video, or the conspiracy guys that I found talking about it being a conspiracy? We're going to watch both, but which do you think we should watch next? Yeah, dehydration, Cassandra. Mail, mail. So, and or conspiracy people. Which do you want me to play next? Nobody knows. Nobody's saying. Hmm. Her statements. There's a vote for her statements, Ellen. Okay. Her statements. And okay, I got enough of y'all. Let's play that then. We'll play that. She has a new book out, too. Uh, she does have a new book out. Her uh, second book came out a few weeks ago, I believe, a couple weeks ago. Um, so we are going to, uh, well, I don't, I haven't read it, so I can't really talk about her book, but I do want to get it. And uh, too bad we- I am not a person who- too bad we can't get it with her. Um, you know what I'm saying? Her voiceover on it. That would be cool, but of course we can't. She does, Cassandra. Oh, call me Ann. Came out last week. Okay, do you have it, Angie? I need to get the book. Okay. So this is her blog that um uh what do they call it a uh podcast with her friend hey jd we're better together with ann and heather hi everybody welcome back to better together with ann and heather we're so delighted to be here today because it's been a moment, hasn't it? But we're in the moment. This is a very long in the, the moment. In the moment. I sang. I shouldn't do that. Maybe because uh, I'm always like, Barb, why do you care? Like, I've always kind of followed her, but I didn't watch all of her movies. But this whole thing with her and Ellen back in the day is it helped me because I needed to come out, you know, and uh, Ellen helped open that door. For me to come out when I was like 40, uh, late 30s. Um, Angie Ray, do you have it like digitally? And so um, then I'm watching this and she's so freaking fidgety. And I'm like, I think that's, I think we have some kind of personality similarity or something because I'm fidgety like that. You shall. <laughs> I did. <laughs> we have we have been traveling. We've been apart. This is the first time I've seen you in like more than a week, which is rare for uh, us. And not good for me. Not yes, good for me. I miss you a lot when you're gone. Yes, I missed you too. <laughs> well, so why don't you talk about, well, you were you just begin? with We Henry. have so much stuff to discuss. Where it's do we want to begin? It, it's true. I mean, I did just go through an incredible experience. It's always so fun to engage in a movie oh, that you really care Andy. about. And I just finished a movie called Supercell with Alec Baldwin and Skeet Ulrich. And I am thrilled to say that it just was more magical than I even thought. Um, 
but, but, but the thing that I want to share with you about um, my moments, because when I travel, I'm allowed to experience different things. And as you know about me or as anyone has heard me <laughs> tell this before, I am not a person who understands pop culture. I've never engaged in the science of pop culture. This is true, my friends. <laughs> and 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 part of what I mean, the whole reason for that for is because I have been studying uh, the science that I consider is the science of love. And I've really wanted to not be a person who mimics others or who even fashions herself after other actors when I'm doing roles. So whether I'm, a, whatever it is that I'm doing. So I'm now flipping that. And of course, well, I don't want to be bad for anybody, Cassandra. I'm trying to be a good influence in ways, you know, I know I'm not perfect or anything like that, but I'm a bad influence. Of course, because I'm better together. <laughs> All I want to do is consume pop culture. I'm like, who is it? What is it? Who can we have on the show? Where? Who do I want to learn from? It's so, it's so exciting to be a part of this because the conversation just opens and unfolds. You're like, oh my god, wait, do I actually have an opportunity to talk with Heather about and to someone who knows more than me? Folks, she has a television in her room now. This which is, is a, very rare. This I'm is not sure deal. if she knows how to operate the device. No, we do not but have, she the, has we, one we do in not room. have the appropriate, um, I was going to say botanicals, but that that's you don't have sense. The it, yeah, yes, remote, yeah, there are remote with, okay, controls or batteries. Set. There is a television in there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a square thing. This, I think that's another show. But I have to say, there is a moment that I feel like, well, you know what I feel like with Ellen in Africa? I feel like a little bit like a new man. Well, that is that is definitely a soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wrote it. <laughs> but okay, well, okay, we're going to talk about this, mm -hmm. I guess. So, well, I mean, I don't know what else to talk about. The fact of the matter is, every single person wants to know what I'm thinking well, about. People Ellen are asking this time, all the time, and, and, and we're always it's, it's not like, saying anything. So we're going to say something. It looks like. All right. Well, what are you going to say? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm glad she's in Africa. I'm going to say that 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 um, her show is off the air. And we're finding now people coming to us. Oh, and I'm not an Ellen hater at all. I just, we're finding out a lot of things about her that kind of fit. Okay, Mary, cool. And we're getting information about how she blocked you in ways that we had no idea. Oh, please extrapolate. I'm well, have we have drink. friends that are coming forward. What, what we're finding is that that show was held over apparently your head as a, as a, as a, as a tool <laughs> that, you know, for going out, if you're on a show, if you're in a film, they got to go through the Ellen show to promote it. And guess what? It's not Ellen pleasant. blocked you from the show. <laughs> And everybody knows that so much so that friends of ours who have gone on the show have told us that they have been told specifically in the green room before they go on the show not to bring up your name. Well, here's what's interesting. How powerful am I that my name will make a quake like our voices it can actually. <laughs> But what, what's interesting to me about hearing that, and of course, I want all the all the details. Um, when I went on Rosie, I was uh, promoting, I think, Donnie Brasco. And I went on uh, the Rosie O'Donnell show, which is a talk show at that time. I see. I knew that because yes. I was on it. Um, everybody knows Rosie's gay, right? I mean, I don't think anybody doesn't know that. But this is interesting right here. The first was correct. Okay. So That's I understand that she was a part of pop culture at a certain time. So I was met in the dressing room, which you, you get backstage at uh, Is the dressing shows. room the green room? I'm just asking no, for the, the dressing viewers room and is myself. more private. The green okay. room, you can have two, oh, two or more. Oh, that's where you wait. Okay. <laughs> yes. I've been but in green rooms with you. Okay. You have been. So and dressing two or rooms, more. actually. <laughs> <laughs> we won't get too personal here. No. So... When I was in my dressing room, you don't normally meet David Letterman backstage. That's not, but that's not how it's done. You go through his producers and, and sculpt things. And as, as I had done with Rosie's producers and I got a knock on the door and Rosie comes in and, and, and sits herself down uncomfortably in front of me and basically states, let me cut to the point. If you bring up the fact that you and Ellen are a couple, I will not promote you. It will, we will erase this episode. If you bring her up, if you bring up gay love, if you bring up love, if you bring up anything having to do with the movement that you feel that you're a part of, you will not have your 
film promoted. Now, that was a long time ago, and that was Rosie O'Donnell. And I remember Ellen. For the Horror, youngins out there that might not know, Rosie O'Donnell is openly gay herself. Openly gay now. She was not then. Oh, and I and I do have to say, <laughs> no one at that time um, stood by Ellen's side. I'm, I'm proud to have been the person to do it. Uh, because she certainly didn't have support. And for that, I feel compassion. So that horror of a, I didn't even understand how things were sculpted. I did not understand how things were manipulated. I was a young and yet I'm no longer young. And so, um, the fact that Ellen, and I've heard multiple stories of this, has had the same conversation in person with those of guests who may be my friends is a, I'll just equal it. I don't want to talk about emotion here when I talk about Ellen. I just want to talk about truth. If one was horrifying when Rosie tried to shut me up, why is yours not horrifying? And I think we want to ask why one would have such a domain after 20 years of trying to shut somebody up so much so that her name could not be whispered. I don't know that they wanted to shut you up. I think she wanted to shut you down and shut well, you out. Very, very much she did. And by the way, she had a lot of people that went along with her. Because this is what's happening now is that people are coming forward that I'm speaking with and saying, well, you know, our hands were tied when hands with the Ellen tied. show. That and, means money. And if you, yes. And if you think about all the studios, the TV shows, the films that considered you and then thought, oh, wait, uh -oh. there's that Ellen cock block that's that right. we have to consider. That's right. Let's just hire Mira you have Sorvino. Her, that's right. right. That's right. You have her in your movie. You have her in your show. You ain't going to get promo on mine. And that's a thing. And that is a thing. And that is. And we didn't true. realize that until, until the show was canceled. Burnt popcorn, that's possible. It very much it very well could be possible. Um I don't think her I don't think her relationship with Ellen, you know, was ever gonna be helpful to her career. Not when it happened, because you gotta remember when it happened, even Rosie O'Donnell, who's over there, you know, gay as Tuesday. And she's and she's saying you can't even talk about romance. I mean, you know, just shuts her down before she lets her on her show. So it was a different time. So if I mean, I'm not you. You could be totally right. I don't know. Canceled because then people were coming forward and and telling because well, th they were afraid to. Uh, fear, fear is uh, has a very big force. It's not as big as loves, obviously. But I do want to say you teased about this before, but that I was the original canceled, and I am going to be the original uncanceled. I am uncanceled today. I am finished with that. This is what I say. Goodbye. Watch out. You're fucked. And then um, to add to that, um, Mary says Ellen was blacklisted a long time through others. Um, I had a thought and it just left me. So we have officially uncanceled Ann H. I'm uncanceled, folks. Why don't you join us in our next 10 minutes coming up? Now that we're talking about it, I guess the let's truth's talk about out it. now. Cassandra, I, I think so too. I think so too. Um, and that you know, you hear rumors about different people, and it's just like on, it's just like here on YouTube, you guys. You hear things, people say things, and every uh, most things have a little bit of truth in them, but they're they're exaggerated or twisted or anything. So there's so many people that came out and said things about Ellen to the point where she canceled her show. I mean, or, or her producers or whatever, she got her show canceled and um, where there's smoke, there's fire. So I'm not saying that Ellen did everything everybody else said, but you, it comes to a point where you got to go, well, why are all these people saying this? So, I mean, that's just some, a way to think about it. Let's, okay. Well, what is the truth? Because 
uh, because I, uh, let's go, I guess. Let's go. Okay, ask so, me a question so and I will answer. I'm I've been ask, waiting to tell my truth for 20 years. Uh, we Nobody knew. CLM, me too. It's, it's, uh, it's a conundrum that I'm not sure about what to say, really. Um, hey, 71. 71, I mean, yeah, when you get so many people saying it from all different sides, that's what I'm saying, because... Like in here, like on YouTube, I mean, I have had people claiming that I dox them and they've got proof of it and everything. Well, I didn't do it. So you can say it all day long. But now if 30 people came out here and said that I um, dox them and they have proof, then more people would start believing it. But, you know, I just so many things happened. Yeah, burnt popcorn. Um, Anne is has been unstable. She sure did. She went off the deep end and showed up at someone's home and made herself at home and was talking about space aliens and stuff. So yeah, Amber, there's there's a little bit of truth there. Uh all right it was going to be today but it is Hello sometimes you just today. you just feel it and you go with it and the time is right well, and you sit on something for long enough that it's time to talk about it yes and the other uh dominator is with her people apparently um so and i'm pretty sure they're drinking uh maybe it could be white wine or vodka it you don't sit like people don't sip on water like she just did i don't think Ellen isn't stable either. Yeah, that's true. Uh, unstable. Uh, yeah, she was in a movie called Mr. Wrong. I mean, I've had different periods of time where I was a fan of Ellen and where I wasn't. What I will always stick to, uh, the one thing that was going back to when she came out publicly, back when there weren't people coming out publicly, and I was one of the people that that helped. So I'm always going to be, it's one white wine. I'm always going to be um, appreciative for her doing that because it helped to me. Okay. And I'm sure it helped other people. Um, so, but, uh, but as far as her, like, I never hardly, I, I hardly watched Ellen's show. I'm not a huge Ellen fan. I mean, although for years I heard I look like Ellen almost every day, constantly. She had a mental break after the breakup with Ellen happens. Yes. Yes, Cassandra. That's true. That's true. If you're with somebody, look, I was just working for a narcissist in the last few years, uh, worked for this man. And when I left there, I had to unwind from all that. And I just worked there. I wasn't even... I didn't see him that much, um, but he's so, he's such a narcissist. And I did, I had to completely, it took me a few weeks to unwind from that. And um, it's, it seriously affected me. And I wasn't in a like romantic or even close friendship with this man at all. And um, so I understand coming away from a narcissist relationship that's all in the public eye how and would go off the deep end and she probably was taking some kind of uh pills you think that she did well supposedly aunt um ellen's career her her own career really took a back you know a step back um at that time because she was the first one to come out like that and um so I think it hurt both of them. You did, Amber. Well, I just uh, I, I just didn't watch. I'm not a huge uh, talk show fan anyway. I did. Well, I I mean I I enjoyed Doctor Phil more than I enjoyed watching Ellen, and I don't really watch him that much either. Meds and alcohol don't mix ever. Right, Mary. Right. Well. I'm going to say that, in my opinion, from just what I've observed, 
I definitely believe that Anne has, you know, I mean, I don't know what she was uh, diagnosed with, but I mean, I believe she's got mental illness. You don't just go off and go into somebody's house. And I mean, yeah, I came out of uh, a narcissist work environment and had to decompress from it, but I didn't go out you know, knocking on some random door and going in there and taking a shower and uh, putting on slippers and stuff and talking about aliens. Yeah, aliens. I mean, yeah, her stand up was fun. Oh, I know from what I have read that Ellen has always said that she has no idea why you ended it with her. Can you answer that question <laughs> once and for all? <laughs> okay. <sighs> I'm sorry. Can you? Are can, there? Do I have allergy? Okay, fine. No. Let's let's let our viewers know. Well, Why? first of all, I've written a book about some of the truths, and the second one will be coming out shortly. Um, so sad. She's talking about her book coming out shortly. Again, this was in 2021 in June. She died in August of 2022. So, um, and her book just came out here in January of 2023. The fact of the matter is, if anybody chooses to look at the truth, the, the signs and the the reasons of uh, their arrival are apparent in every single thing. The problem is people went along with the point of view, unfortunately, that abided something that was a lie. We are responsible for seeking the truth. We are responsible for our own point of view. We aren't told often that ours matters enough to question ourselves enough. I just did a movie about this very thing, and it was one of my delightful. And speaking of movies, when Anne passed away, she had filmed a lifetime, it's lifetime, I believe, a movie about um, sex trafficking. And so the conspiracy people just, um, and, and, and then the scene, uh, it just all, it just all ties up together. She was acting a bit off like she was on something beyond alcohol or was it just, I think she uh, was on, um, you know, Molly's or something. I mean, I think that she was, you know, I do. I think she was under some substance, at least one. A narcissist person can cause a partner to have like bipolar behavior. So I'm thinking we had her thinking she was sick. Pleasures in my life that I got to act this role because The Vanished was a movie that was two movies at the same time. And why I found that to be so significant in my artistry was to be able to show what it looks like to be told the same story, but because of point of view, we miss the truth and the facts. That's the story of my life. And I have been dealing with that and on trying to understand that, comprehend that, which took my intelligence to come into why we would ever try to bury somebody who spoke about love. Why we do that, what love is, what it means, why we are interested in, in quieting a force that means more to us that I call love. And it is the study and has been of my last 20 years because of how I was buried and not understanding why we want to do that. Why would we bury others? I think it's the beginning of a question that had not been asked to me and has not been asked until this moment. Timing is everything. And and all I am here to do is, is embrace the fact that it's time to tell the truth. So why did you break up with Ellen? Well, I think you know the answer to that question. I think we could probably whittle it down to one thing. If we live in loving kindness, and that is my... What does that speak volumes about, Angie Ray? If she's fidgety and not fidgety? Sounds like jumble talk. Yeah, I mean, she does. Uh, she's sitting there drinking, too. So we don't know how much she drank. I mean, I think they drank on all their... Uh, there are streams. She's insanely fidgety, and most of them, I didn't see her like that in videos when she was with Ellen. So what does that tell you, Angie Ray? What are you saying? 
Oh, you think she got damaged by Ellen? Okay. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't, like I said, I'm fidgety. I think I'm fidgety with anybody I've ever been in a relationship with or been around. I'm just fidgety. Like, I don't know. I don't know about that. I, I, I'd have to go look, Angie Ray, and, and think about that and look back. Destination and my dream for us all, I would say that was not her goal. But that was her banner, which she led with. Listen, when you want to steal somebody else's language, the problem is you hit a wall. Because the language is enough to drive you forth. Its purposing was enough to give her power. And the reality is, if you are not on a conscious conversation and communication with the universe and its truth, you hit a wall because you can only get furthered if your intelligence and your heart meet. And unfortunately, that she did not greet. Laura Lulu, do you ever, um, like, I totally get what you're saying here, talking around something because of the backlash, because I do that when I talk about the drama and stuff in on YouTube, because you know, you know, you know that if you bring up somebody's name, then you're going to get, you know, talked back. And so, you know, I, I can see that measuring your words. Um, this is a big deal. This wasn't just a little feud. I mean, this is like big, a big deal. Yeah, Burnt, I'd like to see that too. Um, but I don't think we're going to actually be able to see proof of that. Um, unless somebody took her to court and how do you prove? Well, you'd have to have witnesses that say, yes, Ellen said, because I mean, supposedly Ellen told people who came on her show, um, her staff and everybody not to make eye contact with her. That's weird. How could you, you know, work for somebody and you're, you're told you can't even make eye contact. Yeah, Amber, there's a lot of trauma. Well, we all have gone through trauma, or most of us. Yeah, we don't know the ultimate impact. <clears throat> true, 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 true. Ellen has had issues with all of her girlfriends that were in Hollywood. Well, um, who else was her girlfriend? And, you know, there's rumors all the time that she's going to divorce um, Portia... Portia, and um, I don't know. I mean, controlling the narrative on her stage, you mean, Mary? So basically what you're saying is you can only keep up the gig for so long. I didn't know what, as I always call God, your grandpa, Kiki, I don't know Kiki's timing, but you face what you face in the mirror every single day. And unfortunately, it's just like I say in my first book, you don't get two cups of insanity in and get to take one cup out. You meet your maker. Okay. Well, that was a riddle, I got to say. Well, God is the real. <laughs> You're going to have to start getting used to me now, right. bitch. <laughs> Watch out. Right. Slow your roll on that Coca-Cola. <laughs> Cut that out because they'll think it's Coke. So never mind. It actually is Coca-Cola. <laughs> no, well, here's the proof. You know what? Every other person also like, oh, my gosh. Yes, the, the problem with disease and abuse is this. Once you catch the train of it, you have to go. So we always have a fork in the road. Once people call, and I've said this about call me crazy. If I had known people would do whatever I said, I would have called my book, call me sane. And my next one will be, by the way, call me sane. Because now you'll do what I say. Listen, the reality is we have gone to a place where we are not looking at the truth. And yeah, I did that. we I are getting me. its consequences. I moved my hands like that and I got in all kinds of shit. <laughs> And that's just what I do. If y'all never seen me do that, I do that all the time, but don't do it. <laughs> that's how she's so controlling your pants. This in our face. And what we're here to do 
He's trying to flip that on his head and say, let's look with grace at this opportunity to live this life. We've all come through a very difficult time. We've all been merged in the first time in our lives in an understanding that every single human being who has gone through it. And we are coming out the other side. We have an opportunity for freedom or we have a, an opportunity to get back on the death wagon and start believing the lies that we've been crammed into each other's faces for years ages centuries on eons it's time to flip it and then start having some fun don't you agree i do but i, I want to clarify something here because we always talk well, about i have a few books we have we always talk about living in kindness right and so here we are telling your truth about ellen and we're not being um oh well, we haven't even begun i know but we're not being of here's the thing there's a difference between living in kindness and also standing up for yourself at a certain point. And I think that's where we are at right now with talking about this story. Yes. And, and and people say, because I know you don't read your comments, but I'll read the comments and they're like, oh, there's Ann H talking about Ellen again. Ann doesn't talk about Ellen. Well, We've done a few TikToks that, that our social media team has suggested listen, we, we do. Don't pay attention Anne to just what people want to listen to. We're stupid. I mean, give me a break. There's one question people want to know. What do I think about Ellen? And in fact, I haven't said that yet. I have not rambled on about her for one single moment. For 20 years, I have withheld my understanding. I have been canceled since the day I was born. I've been buried since the day I was born. Every single truth that I spoke, I was hit more, buried more, fucked more, or despised more, and then had calculated visions and, <laughs> and circulations of systems that spun me up and out of the system that would in any way challenge the fact that she was not telling her own truth, but another's. Why do you think she tried to put me in an institution, folks? Hi, called my mother. Guess what? Two people who wanted more than anything to have my truth buried. It was not my timing. I did not and could not ask God for what that would be. All I could do was stay on my truth, do what I was doing and study this thing called love. There you go. You got to stand. That's that's a good uh, hint for all of us. You know, you you do have to stand in your truth and you can't always speak out publicly about what people do to you. And sometimes you just have to shut your mouth and move on and try to survive. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad about Robert Downey Jr. I, I really like him. I do. I like him. Sweet Lulu. Love that we tried to bury and now I am up and out of the ground. And unfortunately, those two women could not shut me down. Whew. Want to start over? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, but let's talk about let's talk about for a minute, because look, there's so much to unpack here with the Ellen thing. And I think that since we've started it, we might as well. Uh, finish it Good, because then I think it's enough talk about her. Let's get on to some fun stuff. Yes. But, but I do want to talk about how, look, basically what we're saying here is that she, she basically pitched herself as the queen of kindness and we're finding that that perhaps was not the case. And you're saying that in your experience with her, that was not the case. And in fact, that was, kind of your jam so bitch kind of stole your look <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. to say the least and, and so, and so look, the irony the of it is is that you've always been saying the same thing you are somebody who's That's always one thing been, you can say about been me. saying the same thing and and when you say something that that is not aren't they been friends for a long time though um i don't think so quite organic to you or truthful you're going to get you're going to get popped and where i see her having done this and and just plain proof we get people can tell us all the things they want to tell us but i saw it completely when she did the 20th anniversary of her coming out episode and they did she sat with oprah and they did an entire documentary on it and your name was not mentioned once you were cut out of the story you wow. were actually literally cut out of the picture they showed when you and ellen went on oprah's show wow. and they had a tight shot on ellen and you were sitting right next to her and you were I you were you. cut out of it and you were cut out of that part of the story and you were such a big part of that story because 
when you took her to that movie premiere and you were basically right. blackballed mm -hmm. from that moment on, that's a part of the story. And she, with her big platform, just took you, not only did she take you out of the history of that, she, from what we're finding out, every opportunity she got to block you from working to, to support your family took that from you as well. And shame on the people who went along with it too. I got to say, like, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, it's a really yucky thing that's coming to light right now. And I will say, um, <laughs> wait, 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 I love that you're laughing. You have to, because I'm like, I will say what? what I will say, you know, what? like, like, let's fucking go. Let's fucking like, go. Like, that's what I say. I'm going to tell you something right now. Baseball. We oh. say, we say like when you, when you are like ready to yes. rumble, and, yes. and not that I'm ready to rumble. I don't want to rumble with Ellen. Or right. CLM. I agree with you there. Welcome. Or anybody. I already I'm, did. I'm re well, fine. Okay. I'm ready for you to start getting the work that you deserve. And and that's what I mean when I say let's fucking go. Yeah, like let's, know. let's, let's, Ann H is uncanceled, motherfuckers. Uncanceled, motherfuckers. <laughs> Listen, this is one thing that I have to say about you saying yuck. You know, it really is yuck. And I, I just have to bring up a fact. You know, Oprah looked at me when I was on the show that I was obviously sliced away from. 50-50, wow, I say, you know what, that's how can you How can you talk about Ellen coming out and exclude any mention whatsoever of Ann? Like, I don't. That's just weird. That's just weird. I mean, how could you not include that? The amount of knowledge we've been given. We've been given 50% of our language of love. We've been given 50% of our language of the intellect. We've been given 50% of the language of our bodies. And, and the fact of the matter is the flip side needs to be understood. When I sat on that couch in a, such a good. divine entrance into standing up for what I believed. And we didn't know about Harvey until Weinstein, until somebody brought it out, you know, and look would you if if this is true about alan and i don't know i don't know but if you knew this was happening to ann why are you going to get in the middle of it and then lose what you have and ellen go after you no these people are big time people i just don't get why you would exclude her from that which was truth, motherfucker. My God, this woman is telling the truth. That's more interesting to me than any other thing I've been shown as love. I like that this person is standing up for what I believe was truth and the consequences. She suffered consequences because she did not believe that the truth would make her anything other than queen. Here's the deal. Unfortunately, life will greet you in a very unfortunate time because when I was sitting next to you and Oprah looked at me and said, what would you say? And if people said to you, yuck, you weren't sitting next to me. You were sitting next to Ellen. Well, yes. Yes. Well, she certainly wouldn't have said that to me. <laughs> Are you a shapeshifter? I am. Well, you said sitting uh, next to you. Well, uh, okay. You know, I'm, uh, and, and, and she and, said, basically, you know, she was insinuating well, I was that asking gay yuck. love was like, well, I mean, what, 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 the thing you want to say is like, well, what would anybody say? Um, hi, I'm looking into the eyes of a woman who suffered greatly, very many things that I did. And I'm talking about Oprah, not you. They did not replay that. Uh, they didn't replay that in the 20th anniversary. What? Excuse me. And then she did a show on me the next day. Was it possible to be or have love or love both genders? Was I, was I so odd that I could love without gender? Is that even possible? As if I wasn't thrown in the inhuman category enough. 
Like, what are you talking about? Is it possible? Now we've come some way, and I'm, I and I know that that the beginning of that conversation has something to do with me, and I feel very proud of that. Gender free love is 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 a given, by the way, and to have say yuck to anybody, and I think we're starting to celebrate the other. The fact that there was such a there was such a conscious, deliberate erasing of what it was that I was talking about is what we have to look at. Not what was done wrong, but why we were not able to talk about it then. Why were we not able to talk about love? Has it taken us this long to be able to do it? So we're moving into a next step, hopefully. And hopefully I have some more intelligence, I know I do, around it because I've studied it to be able to communicate a little bit better about what happened 20 years ago and the fact that it's taken us 20 years to be able to be at a point where we can listen to the blissful. truth again. And Ellen's fine. She can sit on her pile of money. I well, hope be you fine. like your money because that's why I broke up with you. Do you like sitting on your piles of cash? Because guess what? It gets you exactly where you are. And by the way, baby, and it's what you wanted then. And I hope you're liking it now. Cheers. You broke up with her because she had a lot of money or you broke up with her because she- I broke up with her because her goal was to have a lot of money and mine was to find love and hers was I want 60 billion. Good. Good luck. Our forks okay. are never going to meet. The further we stay on with this, the further we will be apart. Okay. She didn't live in that love and kindness. <laughs> no, did she? she didn't. <laughs> um, but, you know, but you and I don't if talk about she wasn't a dick. <laughs> a revenge a lot. You know, there's one thing that I remember there, there is one, there is one little nugget that I do have a sense of wanting a little bit of, um, I guess the only word is revenge. Um, I feel that you were so wronged and now to know that you were continuing to be wronged, it, 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 it fires me up a little bit. And, um, and, and, and especially look, when you look at somebody like Ellen, who literally is sitting on a pile of $60 billion and then Could feed countries, right. And then you're, wow. but you got a Porsche. I mean, you're, again. Not, you're not hurting. You're, you know, you live beautifully. Wait, that's you, really funny. I just noticed that. Sorry, I have to put a pin in it. I realized that Ellen drove a Porsche. I want a Porsche. Well, she, and she's not going to give me a Porsche now. Culture that, and then she married one. She <laughs> All she used to do was drive Porsches. And she collected them. I just thought it was so stupid because they were so loud. You couldn't talk to them. So I thought it was so I'm going to drive a Porsche. I know, well, but now I'm going to get us both one. But, uh, but you're going to buy me one. I'm going to buy you one. And okay. They're going to be red, white, and blue. And no, they're not. I want mine flag. to be either white or black. I mean, or okay, baby fine. blue if it's vintage. Ba- baby blue would be good. Ooh, maybe we'll have matching yeah. ones. So, um, I mean, but the hilarious thing is that all she wanted was money, and then she ends up marrying a person named Portia, who, by the way, oh, I warned. Funny. I wasn't getting the joke. I, war- I took this long to get it. Portia even asked me about Ellen before, you know, Portia came to my wedding because I was on an Ellen McBeal with her. And Portia even said, I'm going to go after Ellen. I know you're not. I'm like, but you won't be the poster child, girl, because guess what? That poster child has already been taken. And by the way, it wasn't a great spot, but you're not, yours ain't going to be any easier. And I'm oh, telling wow. you now, and like red flag, red flag, red flag. We're going to go to a dive bar and meet Camaro. Oh, oh. <laughs> hey there, Camaro. Uh, How you doing? <laughs> I met a Camaro on the side of the road. Okay, we're digressing. <laughs> we're digressing. I mean, let's get back to some serious shit. She was a bitch. Oh, dear. Relief it is. Oh, oh, oh. do you know that commercial? Blah, 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 or whatever. Relief yeah. it is. It's nice to get the truth. Pop, pop, fizz, fizz. Oh, oh what, what a relief, relief it is, is then yes. about private parts and I shouldn't. Is that a commercial? Well, I don't know. Why do I know I these know. things? Anyway, can we talk about where we've been this last week? One hundred cars for kids. Okay, depends. Stop get them if you have to pee. Where's the beef? Oh, where where is the beef? Don't eat beef because I'm a milk. You know, it's on such a different <laughs> time zone. And, uh, and and Helen and I are trying to like cover our <laughs> noses b- so that we don't. B- b- I you have know, a and bad she's off camera. Problem. I was just, I mean, there we, we crack each other up, up more than other people do. Let's try to crack Is this our transition our, away from yes. what we were just talking about. Let's try to be funny because we're what? done with that. We're done with done. that. Or unless we think of something else. That and and, and putting summertime. on clothes and strapping on shoes. I, sh- I yeah. actually 
am not in a lone flyer very much. Uh-huh. I do not. I remember when I was flying somewhere and I was, and, 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 and I didn't know I had to call my daughter who was like telling me what to like, she, my, my 20 year old daughter has flown alone. Yeah. Was I to know oh, yeah. that they book you on American there and Delta back or something? I, I had to decide, am I going to miss my options about small towns? Your arms around you. And I know she knows who She's I am. She's the owner of Liam. Yes. But, but she runs to sat me here because she was going to see me by my people. So apparently <laughs> you're my people. That is so on the set and Tori's Achilles. And we, um, to me in in some way that i cannot explain so when i when we get to savannah i guess that's all of it have on me when harriet tubman died this isn't uh that's all they're talking about ellen so that was exactly the best feeling but this is all and a little bit sad when you look at how um how she died. You know, she said, Aunt, she said that Anne was trying, I mean, Ellen was trying to cancel her. And then a year later, she's dead um, in weird circumstances, which some people think she was murdered. I'm not saying I believe that. I think it's weird. I think the, the uh, whole, the whole, uh, wreck thing was just absolutely weird um and i you know i can't help it i really can't help it but we're gonna watch what these guys say about the conspiracy stuff Yeah, the love of money is the root of all evil. That's true, CLM. If all you're trying to do is get money, you'll do anything. It whatever your goal is, you're going to do what you got to do to get there, right? If your goal is to make sixty billion dollars, which is what she's saying about Ellen, Ellen's going to do whatever to get there. Um, money can't buy you. Money can't buy you love. No, I mean you can't. Money can help you, but it's not going to make people care about you and stuff. Um, just a second. Oh, thanks, sweet Lulu. I really appreciate that. Wow, thank you so much. Um, also, it's the last day of the month. If anybody wants to join my memberships, I have the membership link at the top. I am going to be going live again all the time um not every morning but a lot of the time and um i hope y'all will come back if you've left and um join up with me i don't think she hit the brakes and five six seven eight i don't think she hit the brakes i don't know what was going on with her i mean maybe the car malfunctioned but why was she driving 80. why was she driving 80 after she had a wreck earlier in the day she already had a wreck she bought the wig she had a wreck ran into a garage people were chasing her she almost ran over some lady and then ellen does not seem like a happy person yes thank you amber um Her heart wasn't true. Yeah, thanks, Amber. The drugs were in her system from earlier. Yes, yeah, she had drugs in her system, but she wasn't under the influence is what we were told. Now, I don't know, but it just seems odd to me. Yes, yeah, she had the fentanyl they found, but they're saying that the fentanyl was given to her after she was taken out of the car. I don't know if it I don't know if they do that in the ambulance or whatever. But it was determined officially that she wasn't under the influence and that's not what caused her to crash. So, um, so yeah, 71, she did have drugs in her system, but, and then there was the vodka bottle in her car, people were saying, and 
you know, I don't like it takes hours for alcohol or drugs to wear off. Depending. Yes, that's true. 71. Um, the uh, half life of drugs vary. For instance, um, the effectiveness of those drugs, like, um, well, like the, the, the half life of cocaine is really, 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 really quick. Um, it's fast. I don't know the number, but the half life means how long it takes for half of that um, to leave your system. And the, that for cocaine is very, very fast, um, you know, a few minutes. Whereas depending on fat content in your body, if you use marijuana, it stays in your system a long time. It has a long uh, half life. Uh, yeah, they said no alcohol. She wasn't under the influence. Mary Thomas, I'm just having a hard time reading. Uh, she wasn't trusting the situation she was in and got SR since getting ready to release the document. I'm sorry. That's just getting all garbled for me. Um, you can't mix vodka with drugs. It will give you a wacky effect. Yeah, anytime you mix um, substances, it does that. Conspiracy. By the Hollywood Star Whackers. <laughs> oh, the Star Whackers are back. Yeah, yeah oh. they're back. I love conspiracy. It's Star Whacker season. So this will yeah. just give but us an I idea thought... of what's being said out here in the public. If you're not, hey, Irvin, if you're not, um, you know, watching it or seeing it out there, because it is a subset of people who really think that she was murdered and they're talking about the Illuminati, um, all kinds of things. But, you know, and then you've got Occam's razor, which says the most likely thing that happened was just the, you know, the simplest thing. The simplest thing would be that she just was out driving around acting crazy and drove 80 miles down a very narrow road and didn't stop and just went flying into a house and burned to death. But I just think there's more to it personally. Uh, this was pretty cut and dry. Right, Angie. No, yeah. but the, is the Illuminati involved in this or what's going on? <laughs> I mean, there's a lot going on. They said that her car was completely electric, so it's easily manipulated by Elon Musk. Electronics. Elon Musk, yeah, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> um, by the Hollywood elite, they have, you know, every star's um, electric car. They could run it by remote control if they want to. Yeah. It was an electric car. Yes. What it's, is the model again? They say it's an electric car. It's a Mini Cooper, right? Yeah. I didn't know Mini Cooper was electric? electric. Yeah, the, the motors are small enough. I thought that'd be, you know. I it's... thought they were like Bob Dylan acoustic. You know what I mean? And also, I, I don't think this had anything to do with this particular thing, but they're, the Teslas and stuff, they're catching on fire. Those batteries, there's something scary about them. Wait, yeah, what? she was driving. <laughs> <laughs> Bad joke. Yeah. <laughs> she was driving a Mini Cooper for sure. Yeah. People say it's all electric. I don't know that for a fact. Um, I don't know if anybody knows that for a fact. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie. Yeah. Remember that song? Oh, yeah. Marsha Griffiths. Slides. You can uh, feel <laughs> it. It's okay. So, and five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, they're saying remote control. So, wouldn't there be an easier way to take someone out? than remote control in their car and were they remote control in her car when she ran into that garage earlier and they just happened to remote control her car in the middle of a neighborhood where anybody could have like the lady in that house could have died or her her turtle could have died or her dogs yeah, she bought the wig uh, earlier in the day. I have seen the photos. That was the last photo that she um, that she took. You know that she posed for. Basically, there was the other the other photograph of her sitting in the car that after she had that little wreck. I know Nikki. I think that there is a lot of Nikki's uh, a lot of um, evil there. Yeah, Bones. Yeah, we. Ellen and DJ Twitch and, um, you know, there was just Hollywood drama around it, but it just seems like more to me. It's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie, woogie. Dun, 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 dun. 
So you're saying it's like that scene in Batman Returns where the penguin puts the control on the Batmobile. Yes. And drives for yeah. Batman. Exactly. Is that when he's on the Mary Thomas, where do you have uh, proof of that? Do you have some kind of uh, link to that or something? That she was about to go into hiding? Yeah, I'm not sure what that red wig was for. And she didn't want it cut. She didn't want it anything done to it. Um, you know, it could. it's possible she was just out manic, you know, man she was having a manic episode. I don't, I really don't know. Took a selfie with her. Yes. Yes. Uh, Nikki, he felt bad about it because he felt like, you know, he was the last person to, to interact with her. Um, so he said she didn't, she wasn't under the influence. Danny, De Danny DeVito? Evil Danny DeVito. Yeah, he is. Oswald Cobblepot. <laughs> <laughs> and he bites a guy's nose off. He does. Yeah. He kind of looks like Rudy Giuliani looks right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> hell are you weighing? All right. Paul Walker, Anthony we Bourdain. Remind us. QAnon anals of the what? Twitter. <laughs> annals. Annals. <laughs> yeah, I got something on my mind. My, my annals. And up my I mean, I can tell you from experience. Um from the 90s when I was doing the Coke, you do a little bit and all you want to do is more. And then it runs out, and then all you want to do is find some more. And uh it 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 does it takes a lot of money to do that, to keep that up a lot. But yeah, <laughs> and it's this theory. Um, they're saying that Anne Hayes, Chester Bennington, Paul Walker, Anthony Bourdain. Remind us who Chester is. Chester Bennington was the lead singer of Linkin Park, one of my favorite bands of all time. So what the hell are you waiting for? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so and that, also Helena Hutchins were all oh, involved. Are you kidding me? In a documentary about Jeffrey Epstein. So they were all has, suicided. They were all unalive. Who's been dead for a few years now, Jeffrey Epstein? Yes. So, Chester Bennington's been dead be since way before him. Okay. But who so that's why Helena this, then since Jeffrey Epstein was Alec out? Baldwin. Yeah. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Alec Baldwin. You're saying Jeffrey Epstein still has goons out there. Yeah. Okay. Are they Star Walker? Is this Randy Quaid? Has he waited on this? Yet? There's a lot of powerful people who don't want you to know who's in Jeffrey Epstein's black book. Okay. And so they're all working on a supposed documentary that's going to blow the lid off the sex trafficking industry. So far yes. unreleased. Yeah. In reality, though, Anne H was working on a Lifetime movie. Yes. That so was a narrative feature. It's completely but also, But also touched on the subject. Her family confirmed that she was working on Girl in Room 13, uh, playing the mother of a sex trafficking victim. Like of trafficking. It was about sex trafficking. One yes. of It's a Lifetime movie called The Girl in Room 13. It's coming out next month. Um, we have the trailer here, actually. We have the first look. And maybe we'll watch it on Twitch. Yes, yeah. we should. Grace! So this is like taken. Let's have a toast. My girl. She's been out of rehab for a month. Bagabong. I am committed to making this work. Without a doubt. Guess who I ran into? It's Richie. on YouTube. He's asking about you. I don't need his trouble. Hey. No, Richie, I can't. I hate to say it, but true. Anne Hayes is kind of <laughs> acting like she's sounding like she sounded on the podcast at the end. Yeah. It's not the same Anne Hayes from Wag the Dog. No. What, what do you want? Richie, let me go. Why hasn't she called? So this girl's been kidnapped. It's been two days since you last saw her. Grace has a history with drugs. She's There's nothing here that indicates that a crime has taken place. I keep falling in. She saw Something happened to her. This is so cool. A mother's mission. <laughs> you said you saw your daughter last at the interstate. Drugs flow along that interstate like water. And when there's drugs, there's trafficking. Oh. Is her there's daughter's them. survival. They drug them. After 10 days, they saw They waited way they too long to bring that second text up. How long has your yeah. daughter been missing? It's that a mother's mission is her daughter's 
survival. Yeah. But they it was like, like 30 10 seconds in apart. Between. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they don't care about it that much. Do to me. Yeah, their editors and writers and actors aren't that great over a lifetime. So So let's go with that premise. There's a horrible lifetime Z movie yeah. that's coming out next month. And that's why Anne it's, Hayes. It's not a B movie, it's a Z movie. Yeah. That's why she's in the spotlight of the Star Whackers. Yeah. So they take it upon themselves to make it seem like, you know, this is a documentary they were working on. <laughs> the thing you have open right now is also bringing Paul Walker and Anthony Boyd. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. What? So the Helene, Helena Hutchins was shot by Alec Baldwin because she was part of all that. She was making it. I mean, come on. There's a, a blue check. Jamie Sale was the one that put this out that said there are no coincidences. <laughs> and Paul Walker, Anthony Bourdain, Anne Heche, Helena Hutchins' next project was a documentary about Hollywood pedophile rings, which uh, she was shot and killed on set by Alec Baldwin. And, <laughs> what? And Chester Bennington's name has been thrown in the same that meme. Is like, so he was what gonna the write, hell are you waiting for? He was going to write a song <laughs> about sex trafficking. Well, he was yeah. working on the documentary with them. Did he ever do any other documentaries? In no, he was in like Saw 9. And so that was like his only foray into acting. So there's no proof that it. this guy was working on the. No, that's why it. these. Dude, I they believe, make this up. They're just making it up. I believe 9 11 was an inside job. I believe there's <laughs> fucked up I can't shit wait to just that happened that one quote. with John F. Kennedy. I believe that the magic bullet. I agree yeah, with that. A great. lot of fucked up things have happened. Sure. But if you just start making up insane theories that have no foundation in reality. And they tenuously have something to do with pedophilia. Yeah. That's why I think the CIA actually puts out these theories so that people will be like, yeah, that's it, to distract from what the actual... Because it sounds crazier. Yeah. And you sound crazy if you, if you agree with it. Yeah. It sounds crazy, but there are people that are really into this theory. Yeah, that's why someone posted on our YouTube that says, uh, I think Anne was murdered. Go ahead and make fun. But her car was likely remotely controlled and she was murdered. And I was like, why do you say likely? With her history of documented drug use <laughs> the day of, why do you say likely? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why don't you just say it was? Because how else would she have been killed? Yeah. And Unless there's, there's explosives in the car. There's people saying because there's video of her trying to get off the stretcher and she's completely unburned. Not true. You can clearly see her shirt's fucking melted and completely burnt. And her hair is completely melted. When she came out and then she was on the stretcher and she came back alive, that's what gave a lot of these people some fuel. They also like give you fucking adrenaline to wake you up. Yeah. If you've been in, you know, a severe. She was accident. there for a while. Yeah. She was in there for upwards of 30, possibly 45 minutes. I'm still puzzled by why these firefighters are pushing her to the call to the ambulance. Where's where are the EMTs? Where are they? Why are they pushing her? Why are these firefighters with their big boots on and their hat and all their their weighted clothes, you know, the ones who pushed her once they got her out of the house? Why weren't the EMT? I mean, I don't get that part. But yeah, it is, Laura Lulu. It's all under a microscope. And I, I'm still, I mean, and I will, one of these days, I'll either f believe that it was all just a weird random thing or I won't. I mean, I just can't move past it. As we walk through this conspiracy, should we also walk through that Hi, day Irvin. with these clips? Yeah, let's do it. To remind everybody, the day starts with her at the wig shop, right? Yeah, yeah she went to go buy a red wig for whatever reason. It's so funny because I, I remember this wig shop and I used to do an open mic next door at some coffee shop. Nice coffee shop. They had an outdoor uh, patio on the back where the open mic would happen. In Venice. In I Venice. It was cool. It was like a cool spot. And you actually remember, though, this wig shop. Yes, because I parked right in front of the wig shop to go to the coffee shop every time. It was a Saturday open mic at like 3 o'clock, and there was like like 100 people would sign up for so it. So th this guy's crushing the wig game. If he's able to have a wig shop open for this long... By the way, that's part of the conspiracy theory is that she was buying a wig because people were following her. The yeah. Star Whackers. Yeah. yeah. So she had to buy a red wig so that she couldn't be spotted. See, part of my theory is that she thought she was being chased because she ran into that when she ran into that garage and then those people were yelling at her to stop. 
And then she took off and there was a woman walking and she, you know, got people say she almost hit her, but she very easily could have hit her. And then she's driving 80 miles per hour down this residential area and crashes into a home. So it just all, it's just all crazy. Yeah. Randy Quaid and the Star Whackers. That's a good band name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would fully support that show. Yeah. I'd be like uh you know, like a deadhead, but for the for that band. Yeah. <laughs> so that's her flying. The Mini Cooper. That's someone's controlling her. Yes. There. It, allegedly based on this yeah. idea. Yeah. Allegedly. This is the one where she almost fucking kills yeah, somebody almost, coming out of that alleyway. Somebody. The person turns around and just stares her down. But by that point, she's already way gone. Not to add to the conspiracy fire, but that pedestrian is wearing bright orange. Yeah. Why? <laughs> <laughs> they stand out quite a bit. Yeah. So that you can't miss them. In but other she does words, miss her and she does come to a stop right before she's hitting the street. So it's like if she was remote controlled, why would she not go full force into the street? Why would they slow her down right before she's entering a, an intersection if they wanted her mm. dead? Mm. And really what I'm getting at with the bright orange is maybe that's an actor. Uh, and they oh, want, crisis actor. They, yeah, cri you want. I mean, y'all, they've, they've made crazier things with crisis actors at. They were doing it at a lot of these mass shootings. They used to do it. I don't know if they still are. Hey, Melanie. Medical was in full gear because they what well, they didn't pull her out of the fire. The firemen did. Right? The firemen who went in there that thought she was dead already. That's what I think. I still haven't figured out why they why where the paramedics were and why because paramedics don't dress like firefighters. And I've I've yet to find out. I've asked, why were the, why was there another stretcher? I want them to be seen. Yeah, they have the remote control going, so they know they, it's all staged. Yeah, they want it to look like Anne might hit the person. Ah, you know, and they're they're kind of being silly here, but I mean, Holly, you don't think Hollywood could have made all this happen? This whole thing, Hollywood could. Of all places, of all, of all, you know, it wouldn't take that much to make this in this whole scene. The helicopters there. I mean, is it common for helicopters to already be at a scene like that, flying around that quickly? I don't know. I'm just asking. I mean, it, it seems like to me. Well, I mean, maybe they're already up in the air, but it would take a while to get to get your crew and get up in the air and start. Filming this car ran into a home. What does that serve, though? The story that Anne was out of control. Ah. So that it takes away from the attention that the Star Whackers killed her. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. So All right. Well, we got our own brought. inside conspiracy theory. Yeah. Nutbag. And it adds. <laughs> to the and then so after this is where she could have thought somebody was following her chasing her about to catch up with her for having this wreck they're already ready for it burnt popcorn okay because like here in arkansas that i just don't think that would happen but we don't have the yeah blissful i'd like to dive deep into that but so burnt you're i agree i think you're right but not not here Fire. Resident nutbag. Resident nutbag. <laughs> it adds to the unlikability of Anne Hayes that yeah. day. Mm. That she almost killed a pedestrian. Well, she that picture with her, she looks crazy in the in her Mini Cooper. Does she look crazy there to y'all? After she hit that wall, does she look crazy there? She doesn't look crazy there to me. But when you put everything into it, and 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 if you can see her uh, almost flesh-colored tank top wasn't all that burn when she came out, but she didn't die from burns; she died from inhal inhalation. Uh, 
chemicals and everything. And then, and then, um, I mean, she had burns supposedly like on her legs and they said she was in the passenger seat. She has a seatbelt on here. I'm not sure how she would end up in the passenger seat. Maybe she was trying to get out of the car. They couldn't get her out of the car. I think the car went like down into the floorboard floorboards and thus they couldn't open the doors. But I also don't understand why a firefighter couldn't have knocked out the windows and gotten in there to get her out. Or maybe they did. I mean, the whole top of the car was bashed in. But it, they didn't get her out until they pulled the car out. Yeah. Oh, the picture with her in the vodka bottle. Yeah. Supposedly might have been photoshopped in. Yeah, we were talking about that, how hilarious it would be for a vodka company to be fighting over who's photoshopping <laughs> in their bottle. <laughs> you Tito's is it? like, yeah, yeah we, want, we want in there, okay? And Absolute's like, well, you know, she drank us first. Before. Dan Aykroyd's like, but You don't see any evil in the Idaho 4 suspect? You mean looking at him, you don't? Is that what you're saying, Melanie? Put my crystal skull in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of crisis actors, do we have the wig guy? I think we got the wig guy here. This guy, I can't make hay of this guy. Oh, I can make hay of this guy. Yeah? What do you mean by He's hay? He's like all my fucking people I know back home that put themselves in the middle of a story that they're really not in the middle of. Mm. Were but they there is. that day? Yeah. But he really is angling so for he, sympathy. He's over accentuating his role in this whole thing. Yeah. I should have done something to stop her. I should have seen what was going on. Yeah. It's like, all right, dude. Relax. Crocodile tears. Whoa. Done Mark, me tears over Mark here. here with the tough love. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just going along with the logic that Kyle's throwing down here. Yeah. All right, here we go. Richard Glass. Dick Glass. Dick Glass. It's the the wig shop morning. Owner. Before that fiery car crash left her in critical condition with severe burns. Oh, I see she was in a crash and I'm just like floored. Like, oh my that, gosh, I'm that's, praying. That's a thought, sweet Lulu. Um, when did they, if, if that's true, let me just talk it through here. If they thought there might be another passenger, then why was that stretcher way out there by the ambulance and not up there by the house? Because they said they pulled the car, you know, they were pulling the car, they're pulling the car out. And then she comes around, they, they come around with her. So at that point, when they, so there was a stretcher already over there. Well, why wouldn't they have the other stretcher over there? Hey, like, I hope she's okay. I hope she's okay. He says in this interview that he's never done drugs in his life, so he wouldn't know when someone's on it. Yeah, uh, sure. It's like, okay, you live in LA. I'm sure you've been around one <laughs> yeah. or two people on You're on coke. a wig shop. Get out of yeah. here. <laughs> Richard Glass owned Glass Hair Design in Venice Beach, and less than an hour before Ann crashed her car into a nearby house, she popped into his shop to buy a wig. We discovered that it was Ann Hayes, and from there, she asked if she could purchase a red wig that was up the top, and I said, sure. And as I bring it down, I tell her that it's not cut or styled. She said she didn't care. She wanted it anyway. So from there, I bring it down. I tell her it's a little bit dusty. She says, no worry. Just sell me some shampoo and conditioner. Wow. <laughs> it's just it's so random. So mm. random. Right now, the LAPD okay, is so investigating and for misdemeanor. That DUI. kind of sells the theory that I. Oh, Laura Lulu, that's true. They thought that there was a, uh, yes, the homeowner was in there. So that would make sense to have another stretcher. Um, but if they thought that, okay, so at the beginning, they thought that the ambulance pulls up, parks way out there, leaves one stretcher out there because there's somebody in the house and there's somebody in the car. But we're not going to bring that stretcher over because when we pull the car out, What if there's another person in there? Oh, go get the stretcher. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. True, burnt popcorn. That's true. If anybody would have died uh, besides her. You think her shirt was wet? Yeah, the, the, the neighbor did get out. That's true. The neighbor got out. And that makes sense. I'm 
thanks for throwing that in there because I hadn't thought about that other victim, but still, why is there, and where's the other ambulance? Because you can't fit two stretchers in an ambulance. I just need a wig. People are chasing me. And look mm. at the car. I'm playing devil's advocate here. Yeah. Th that was the most um, relaxed I've seen him during an interview. There was one where he gets into a full on like uh, sobbing fit. Really? Yeah. He's like, I just should have done something. I, no, I've never done drugs. I've never seen people on drugs, so I didn't realize what was going maybe, on. Maybe he I was, was like, shut the fuck he, up. Maybe he was earnestly upset about a friend passing. A friend? One person who walked in one time? <laughs> what? Oh, come on, Mark. Kyle, come on, Mark. Blooded. Yep. I'm playing devil's advocate here. I'm coming for this guy. <laughs> <laughs> here he is. So there are people that are just evil, you know, um, making accusations that uh, that I had something to do with her toxicology report said. Nobody thinks that. Nobody, not one person has said that ever, but he's putting himself in that position. But I'm starting to think that. But yeah, I like this it's, just, it's just a lot. It's, I don't think they should be making fun of this guy. Just a lot. It is. Well, they're saying that she could have gotten the, the cocaine or the fentanyl from me. Can I get the red wig and some fentanyl, please? No, but really, <laughs> is that for here to go? Who's actually asking specifically for fentanyl? Nobody sounds... is, but they... I do too, Nikki. I think that um, that her legs were burned, and she inhaled a whole lot of smoke and lost consciousness at some point, um, and was essentially. I don't mean I don't know how adrenaline works and everything. If you can be. I guess you can't be brain dead and be uh, have that adrenaline. So um, I'm not sure exactly at what point she became. Um, I mean, she must have still had a pulse and a heartbeat to uh, be able to sit up like that. So but yeah, I, I think her shirt, if anything, to me, it looked wet and you know, I don't think she, I don't think she had a whole lot of burns. I think it was the inhalation. How she didn't, I don't know. Maybe she did. The car looked like it had been completely burned. They Bizarre. put it in their coke. Fentanyl is not something people. But that's out. what I would say if I want people to think yes, that that's I, true. I didn't know she, what I was uh, talking about. She broke her sternum. So that's what they we were told. Um, I think she might have ended up in the other seat because. Um, you know, she was trying to get out or something at first, but, you know, she was hurt. Her, you break that sternum, you're not going to be able to physically get out of the car and stuff. And so now exactly. you're turning on him. Yeah. Uh, I, you know what? I'm playing both sides of the fence here. Yeah. Everything that I was supposed what to. What is he supposed to do? <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. I still don't know you why you this car. And she was inside of this car. This car has been burned, scorched. Um, You know, were flames were flames coming in and getting her? Was the heat? It had to be hot. You know, very very hot. Um, the top of the car. I guess she had a sunroof or something. It just seems like they could have gotten to her somehow before they got the car out. But what? I mean, I don't know. I'm not a firefighter or a EMT. I'm sure not. Um, yes, you've heard of uh, people. Um, yeah, Mary, they kept her. Uh, they kept her on life support so they could see if any of her organs were viable because she was an organ donor. Uh, they explode easily. Yeah, I'm sad about it, too. I'm sad about it. And I felt one way, I felt one way when I thought she just was out drinking and drugging and ran into this house. I felt more angry with her than sad. But now I'm just like, how could she be doing this when she wasn't on under the influence?
bad. That's pretty much the entire conspiracy. The fact that people think that she worked on a documentary and she never did. It was the girl in room 13 that hasn't come out yet, which we should watch on Amazon. People can watch it with us live and Haitian's last role. Yes. Um, if you're so inclined. Yeah. Who isn't inclined? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, do you want to send her any well wishes? Sure. Want anyone to be hurt. I don't want anyone to be hurt. She sucks. That's Ellen. God, I went on a tire. Ellen did not want to talk about it. Then she was very kind of rude. After she died, Ellen came out and was very nice to the family. Wow. Yeah, they're um, they're having a lot of troubles with um, batteries from electric cars. Yeah, I agree, Nikki. To me, she seemed authentic, albeit a little bit, um, you know, mental off from the, you know, what everybody considers the norm. Uh, but we all have our idiosyncrasies that make us a little bit different than the next person. So. Yeah, our government. Yeah, they're trying to push these cars. They they sure are trying to. They're trying to. They're saying that at some point everybody will have an electric car. Well, I'm not. I can't buy a new car. <laughs> I don't have any money to buy a car. I read that we cut out of the actual episode. Yeah, but it's <laughs> Kyle went on unhinged. Ellen just, DeGeneres, yeah. dude, she's a monster. Yeah, we had to rein Kyle in. We, yeah. had, to, we had to hold him back and hold yeah. him down, give him a shot. <laughs> uh, 5150. <laughs> yeah, we had to have him committed after going, <laughs> going in on Ellen for a fucking hour and a half. Yeah. Right in the middle of the pod. Based on what Anne has said, they had differences about basically Ellen wanted to take over the world. And Anne didn't. She didn't need all the money in the world. Ellen yeah. did. That's what Anne says. So they broke up. And then that clip Kyle just played. Ellen pretty coldly. I don't want anyone to be hurt. Yeah. Like, Fuck you. Such a bullshit. This is someone you political. ruined their career specifically. She did tweet when Anne died. This is a sad day. Yeah. I'm giving some credit. She didn't say a why. Little, yeah. little credit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it turns I out. my toe. <laughs> Yeah, maybe uh, George Bush did uh, a bad painting or something. Her oh new my, best yeah, friend. Of a veteran he crippled. But yeah, whose fault was his yeah. war criminal. Yeah, Mission accomplished, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mission yeah. accomplished. Yeah. Ellen, you're my new friend. Yeah. You know yeah. who else Bush is friends with and making paintings with? Jay Leno. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah I love this. His big, fat Italian face. Oh, my God. <laughs> Like Leno's making Peyton paintings with paintings. W. <laughs> Bush. Oh yeah. Well, like, oh, oh Michelle Obama fuck? likes him too. Like, get the fuck out of here with yeah. George Bush. That guy is trash, man. <laughs> yeah. Um. There was no possible too far. Does she? Yeah, we don't. We couldn't possibly have hit. We're gonna go down there because it's not too far from where we are. Um, and see the the actual uh, site for ourselves because there was a TikTok that said um, there was no possible way for her to cut across the intersection that she did and hit the part of the house that she did unless it was remote controlled because wow. the opening is a little bit to the left of where she impacted the house. Mm -hmm. So she would have had to go left and then zigzag right is what they say. So that's another conspiracy. We'd, ha we'd have to see it for ourselves because in the footage, it does look a little off. But it's also not something that someone remote controlling would be able to f finagle that that quickly. <laughs> she was going 100 miles an hour. She probably bounced off entertaining something. Entertaining that idea. Though. Yeah. yeah. It's also hard to believe that nobody was injured or killed that day besides, besides NH. Her. Yeah. That's the other part that is feeding the conspiracy. Yeah. Even down to the homeowner being a couple well, feet kids, away when she makes the impact yeah, through the house. The, yeah. That pedestrian, the people at the garage, somehow she perfectly misses everybody. Well, I think these days people are so fearful of maniacs on the street. Kids don't hang out in the streets anymore, like playing street hockey or anything like that. Look at yeah. all that smoke coming out. Look at all that. I mean, you can't you can't breathe in that stuff. And then you've got toxic fumes. 
like people are just deathly afraid of maniac drivers like this. And so they, they're less inclined to like hang out in the street or play basketball or any, you know, have fun or yeah. rec- do any recreation in the middle of the street. Good. Cause that's annoying. Okay. Okay. The ball could hit your windshield, you know? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of smoke. Alejandro says good riddance. Damn uh, kids. Yeah. Get off my porch. <laughs> get on my lawn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. George Bush is back. I'm Clint Eastwood from <laughs> Gran Torino. <sighs> These goddamn kids. Yeah. Get off my goddamn lawn. <laughs> right. These Mexicans. I'm a racist, but I won't be at the end of the movie. <laughs> I just, that's a, that's a big old fire. I mean, yeah, you, you know, a car comes in your home. Okay. Look, there's, is that a wrecker over here to the right of the home that she went into that just rolled up? But they, That's just a lot for my movie. Yeah, yeah. I directed you on it. Wow. <laughs> no, there was. There's a. Very, That's crazy. People should check out the nine one one call. It's actually very oh, infuriating to listen to. Can we hear it? We can hear, but it's very long. Maybe like a second of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Very fast because it's like in the second room. And all right, so we're just gonna look at these at this shot. So they're. Are any of the paramedics up there on the roof? Because that's how they were dressed when they pushed her away. And I've never seen a paramedic dress like that. That's one of the things that really gets me. Y'all can call me crazy or whatever, but I just don't get a paramedic being the one. I mean, these fully clothed firefighters with their hat, their boots, their big coats, all the equipment they're wearing. Uh and then they come pushing, like, I would think the EMTs would be over there waiting on the, you know, they're about to pull the car out. We got to get to her. That incident with someone who was clearly not doing well on drugs and alcohol and was not working on a pedophile documentary exposing Jeffrey Epstein and the Hollywood cabal with Chester Bennington, Helena Hutchins, Anthony Bourdain, and Paul Walker. So and Heath Ledger might be involved. In there's that, that. Yeah. It makes sense. And that does not make sense. So I actually um, wrote some notes down last night and meant to call my local fire department and ask them about these things. And I've completely slipped my mind. I didn't look at my notes this morning. Uh, yeah. 71. You would think they would be calling the coroner. But no, they wheeled her out in an ambulance, covered her up with a sheet, strapped her down, and then she sat up on the stretcher. Which I'm told isn't really that odd because of adrenaline. Told that by a current firefighter who's been doing it for 20 years, who is, uh, you know, I mean, she's a friend of mine. Um, I just think, I just, um, and I want to ask her too, Maybe the coroner was too overwhelmed. Overwhelmed from what, 71? What would overwhelm the coroner? Because it wasn't like a, like I could see going into the Idaho 4 home and what, I, I mean, I can't even really imagine what that looked like because I don't really want to go there in my mind. Um, but Anne didn't. Anne wasn't looking too bad. We saw her from her uh, waist up. She didn't look too bad. Oh, too many cases. Okay. No, she was not pronounced dead at the scene. We were told after the uh, incident that she was going to uh, be okay. And then a few days later, we were told that she wasn't going to make it, that um, they were they had her on life support so they could uh, because she's an organ donor. And uh, so, no, she was not pronounced. She was put in an ambulance sitting up by men dressed as firefighters. Hey, Roddy, good to see you. Too many burns and lack of oxygen. 
Well, it was the lack of oxygen and the breathing in of toxic fumes that took her life. And that same firefighter told me that she and some of y'all just came in. So I'll just repeat this. She told me after it happened. She, well, actually, she made a Facebook post that I saw that said uh, that she was taking the side that people weren't going to. You know, the unpopular side and say that Anne's not going to make it. She, you can't survive breathing all that in. And then like, a, you know, a couple of days later is when they came out and said she's not going to make it after telling us she was going to be okay. Yeah, I think that's what happened, uh, uh, Bones. I think that they, um, you know, she sat up, so she had a pulse, she was breathing. They took her, they, uh, you know, did whatever they do when somebody's been uh, unconscious. And, you know, you can't, your brain does not survive once you are without oxygen for so long a time. And even if she wasn't completely passed out, she wasn't getting oxygen in the middle of a fire. She's getting a lot of toxic fumes. Um, yeah, they did. They were saying that she was going to be okay, that she was in stable condition. And, you know, stable condition means that all, you know, your vitals and everything are good. If you're hooked up to stuff, you're going to be stable. Um, I mean, you can become stable. She didn't look, I don't know, it's just, it was more of, of an internal uh, death, wrong term, an internal, internal injuries because of the toxic fumes, more so than the burns is from what I understand it as, even though I do think she was burned. Yeah, that's right. Um, so guys, um, Let me, let's finish this up. And I appreciate y'all being here for this because I'm, um, you know, we all have things that we like to talk about. And this is one of the things that I really am, uh, I, I hate to say into right now, but, um, you know, that I'm um, intrigued by and want to talk about. And so it helps me if you guys are here and enjoying it along with me. So I appreciate y'all for that. And um, I did get a, a super chat. Thank you for that. Um, is that like being weird? Is it being like glitchy looking like yesterday? What do y'all say about that? Barb's in Hollywood. See, it's right over my shoulder. Oh, that's my chair. Okay. Well, I can't show you. I can't show you, but I'm in Hollywood. So, um, yeah, it's really glitchy. Severe burn. Victims can take a turn for the worst anytime. Yeah, yeah, it is glitchy. Can you hear me okay? Well, I'm about to leave. I do appreciate y'all being here and hanging with me and coming back after so long of me being gone. Um, gonna continue to talk about this case. We're gonna be talking about um, the Idaho case soon. We're gonna talk about um, little Quentin Simon, that, that case is still out there and um, you can hear me fine, okay, good. So I will be back um, hopefully tomorrow with another live and we are, we are set to go now. February's rolling around and I am going to be here in the mornings for y'all. And in the afternoons, I'll be working on shorts. And um, if you have anything you want me to talk about, if there's a case you want me to talk about or something in the news, because I'm focusing more on in the news as opposed to, um, you know, like more like current events than I am focusing on true crime. Although those intersect, um, I'm not wanting to do the whole, uh, the whole, um, you know, one true crime case day and night for weeks and stuff. Um, I like to let other people do that a little bit more. Yes, please send me ideas if you have something you want me to look into or cover. Um, 
or even, you know, and, and when we when I do cover true crime, we'll just be taking, you know, a day, you know, we'll just be taking something out of it and talking about that. Um, like so like we could take Brian Koberger. Uh, how do you think uh, do you think he did it alone or whatever? I mean, I'm just saying I'm not going to do these whole long out drug out long cases, but I will be covering some true crime. It does get a little old, 71, um, depending on, I guess, you know, the creator and the panel. And I'm not a big panel person, so uh, it, it helps to have the back and forth. And I still need to get in touch with Stacy. I haven't talked to her in a while. You know, she came on my show and um, I haven't. Anna Walsh, Anna, I mean, Anna Walsh. Yeah, that's a that's a good case. Um that guy's Looney Tunes. I mean, I did one about her and then when she was missing. And um, and I just never I'm not I'm not real into that, but I, I do want to cover, you know, we're gonna talk about Anne today. We may talk talk about Anne next week, or you know, as things progress after I read her book. Um, that something that may come out, I may see something somewhere, but this isn't just going to go away. So we'll be back to it. And, um, if I know I'm being zapped, Woo why was it doing that? I don't know. Anyway, sorry about that. Yeah. Everybody have a great day. Oh, thank you. Burnt popcorn. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for participating in my chat and for being here and for the super chat. And I will see y'all soon. Bye. Be kind to yourself. Take care of yourself.